This video is going to be of a uh, major restoration of a Macintosh SE computer. Um, if any of you ever purchased these uh, in hopes of repairing or getting one that's in working condition, something that you have to consider is uh, one of the flaws in their construction is their capacitors uh, on their motherboards are faulty and will eventually leak and given their age right now um, all of them are pretty much leaking no matter which Mac SE you buy. If you buy one that happened to be the latest manufacturer it might still work but guarantee the capacitors are leaky, are faulty um, and will need replacing uh, for it to function. Um, some might boot and give you a nice um, usually a question mark sign looking for a boot device but uh, when normally you'll just get a checkerboard pattern. Um, in this video we're gonna restore many aspects of the uh, Macintosh SE30. This SE in particular got a very good price on it um, and that was due to the previous owner attempting to open it by prying it apart with a screwdriver. Um, you can see extensive case damage uh, on the front portion of it. Um, they took the hex pieces out that they could see on the bottom and didn't realize you need a special long hex piece to get the two bolts at the top out. Now, normally when you buy used SE30 or SE rank compact Mac, the biggest risk is that the seller is not going to package it sufficiently and it's going to have cracks. And the most common place it gets cracks is on the front top. Um, that's where a lot of the weight and pressure goes. So usually when you buy one, expect that it's going to at least have some hairline cracks there unless you contact them ahead of time and make sure they're going to have roughly three inches of padding on each side. Um, even doing that, you still based on my experience or good chance you're gonna get one that's cracked anyway so this one's got extensive case damage which I will be showing some attempts at repairing uh, that'll be in a later video this is uh, just part one of a series um, so this in particular got a good deal on it. it's got the cracks on it um, but fortunately uh, there's a bit of a surprise on this uh, that I discovered now I bought it as is untested supposedly worked um, when it was decommissioned but uh, it didn't have any real pictures except one small picture of the front of the unit um, I always hope that maybe it has an expansion card in it lo and behold looking at the back of it uh, extreme fortune um, it has a color video card on it uh, specifically a raster ops color board 264 SE 30 now this board I from my research is somewhat sought after um, not quite as much as the Micron Exceed one um, which I actually have one of those as well on a different unit um, without the grayscale adapter uh, actually plan to build a grayscale adapter for that unit in a different video at some point in time when I get to it but this one for all intents and purposes has a color board included uh, and did not know it had it when I bought it now upon opening the unit, uh, which I recommend doing before you try turning the unit on, I can see right off the bat that the uh, portion that connects to the back of the CRT display is disconnected. Um, won't hurt anything turning it on that way, but you obviously would not get any video on that, or I should say shouldn't hurt anything. Um, Fortunately, the stem is not snapped off. That is one of the delicate pieces of the back of the CRT, a tiny glass stem that in some cases snaps off inside of that board. Fortunately, the CRT is intact, uh, but upon opening, that board was not connected. Um, and just to show you a picture, I did take the video card out, and there it is. Uh, it's got the color card. Um, and can easily leave the uh, dongle attached there, take the card out, the PDS card out. Um, hopefully that'll be a working card for the machine. Um, also can note that this unit appear, appears very, very dusty. Um, uh, looks like a lot of dryer lint in there. I'm not sure where this unit was used. I almost want to, uh, just based on how much uh, lint dust there is, maybe in a manufacturing plant of sorts. Uh, right now I'm going to show you me removing the board. Um, always take caution if you're going to do this yourself. Um, there's parts that can shock and kill you in here potentially. Um, my general rule of thumb is don't touch the red wire. That would be the nastiest one. Uh, 
being the um, flyback uh, transformer that can hold thousands of volts, that's what would knock you down. But it's kind of difficult being an adult with bigger hands to actually get in here. Um, but there is a cable for power that has a clip you have to push in to pull out that attaches to the main board and there's also a speaker cable but that's really all that's attached to the main board here. Uh, then again actually you've got the fuzzy hard drive cable. Um, those are easy to just pull out by the cable. But what you do is you just uh, slide the board out a little bit, pops right out. Now I jumped the gun a little on uh, taking a picture earlier but I did remove the battery. Uh, that is actually the number one killer of these boards is the batteries do rupture at times. The battery acid gets on the circuit board and destroys the board and I want to say it's as high as half the boards right now of this day of age if you buy a used SE30 that's been in storage. Uh, you probably could expect 50% of them to have a destroyed motherboard on them. Um, that's even more so on the Mac SEs as opposed to the SE30s just because the, they're older and the batteries do rupture. So if I got lucky on this one, n nothing's ruptured. Uh, it's got eight memory banks and one of the rare things too is it has a socketed CPU. I think this is the first Mac SE that I will own that actually has the socketed one. So the next step I actually will usually do is uh, put the board back in. I can see that the battery's not ruptured, get the battery out and I'm going to want to actually try to reboot boot the machine to see as is will it boot and display the uh, blinking you know question mark for uh, booting up to the drive so I'm going to reinsert the board same way you hook the speaker cable up um, next is going to be the power cable which is a bit of a pain it would be helpful if you had smaller hands but you slide the board in on the one side clip it in on the other and then plug the power cable in on it if you can fit your hands in there and again don't touch any of the wires if you can help it um, if you need a little extra space you could take the back uh, board off the uh, CRT or try to squeeze your hands in there so right here you can see the initial boot it's got checkerboard pattern not doing anything no sound for bong um, so it's obviously gonna need a at a minimum a recapping so here's just another image of it with the uh, checkerboard pattern on it. So I'm going to proceed to refurbish this on uh, some future videos. Um, so there will be more. Keep your eyes open for it. You can feel free to like or subscribe to this video. And hopefully you'll see the updates as they're posted to YouTube. Thanks for watching.